issues. Um, power switch, reset, LED, uh, power LED, key lock, and speaker. Okay. So here's your speaker. Oh, I see a speaker. Yeah, so your speaker goes here. Reset. Where's your reset? Here's your reset switch. So there's your reset. Reset. What is it that you're resetting? Um, it's a short circuit. It's a crowbar to crowbar your power supply. And here are your LEDs. Actually, it says power LED there, so actually that might put there. I didn't pull this off, so I don't know. Hard drive LED. That's key lock. Here's speaker. Okay. So the only unknown is the hard drive LED. see it. Got to find it. It's probably one of these somewhere in here. Don't know which one. That's keyboard lock. Probably one of these ones down here. But we can find that when you power up. Okay. So there's your um, CMOS clear. Now on this one, it looks like this is a bank to set the um, memory frequency. memory that you have available. This is a Pentium 2, and you can tell because of the stand-up processor. This one is a PC 100, 100 megahertz for the system bus. But the frequencies of the memory is 100. See where it says A10? Mm -hmm. oh, and this tells you PC 100. So that's a 100 frequency bus. The individual memory modules are in the 60 nanosecond range. And that's all there is. What else do you want to know? Uh, AGP bus here. PCI. ISA. Wake on LAN. Okay. That's your video. If you had a PCI video, it's wise to put it right next to it. Network card. Network card is wise down the end because it's the slowest of all the bus. This is your sound card, happens to be ISA. That's it. What else do you need to know? As far as the integrated onboard, integrated onboard, PS2, PS2, USB, you're familiar with that, serial, and this is a parallel IEEE 488. Nothing else to know. What can you use serial for? You don't even use that, those types of connections much anymore, do you? Cameras use them, uh, modems. Some printers. Uh, you could, of course, connect to another computer. 
uh, barcode readers, uh, other keyboards. So you had a double double serial connection. You could connect two computers to each other. And yeah, on this configuration, serial port one, serial port two. So the one would be dedicated to sending. No, they both send and receive. No oh, okay. They're just unique IRQ. Okay. <coughs> the whole system bus is set up on a interrupt request arrangement. You familiar with that, right? Mm-mm. Oh. I I had uh, I'd seen that and I was stuck. I have a um, a course that I was taking that was just getting to that, and then I I hadn't finished reading that part of the course. Uh, it's limited by architecture. Um, I mean, in theory, there's no limit because numbers are not limited. But in reality, it's limited. Uh, so there are a limited number of IRQs. And uh, I'm trying to remember how many there are now. I think there are 16 IRQs that you can have. No, this is going to be up on Google Video, so this is Garth's tutorial to the world and what the uh, inside of these I computers have in the them. parameters. <laughs> I don't remember the limits. <laughs> but it's not a um, it's not an impossible limit. It's an addressable limit. Okay. Uh, so just as your BIOS addresses only so much memory or so much hard drive, it's an architectural arrangement. So in the case of the hard drive, it's a question of, um, of how it understands the architecture of the hard drive. In the case of the memory, it's just a question of how many bits are available. Not as far as memory, but as far as addressable. Okay, so you, you understand the difference. It's not that the numbers aren't there. You can have terabytes of memory. Does the computer understand it? Is the issue. Addressable memory. Addressable. Yeah. Very, very different. So in the case of the hard drive, that can be easily managed through the overlay, which you looked up. And uh, so that just adds an extension, essentially, to the BIOS to allow you to address the additional space in the hard drive. That's all. Um, what about uh, the order of these um, connections here? Mm. Uh, okay, do they, does it make any difference? Uh, or is it just dependent on which you, your system automatically recognizes that you have which device it's hooked up to and then you have to tell it which order in which order to read them? Great question. Um, the order in which you connect these, this is a parallel connection. This is an IDE, which also can be E IDE or extended IDE. And this is connection number one or primary. And <laughs> okay. So for example, this connection here would be the secondary, this would be the primary, this would be to the system bus. The distinction of whether or not you connect one to the other is not the cable. It has to do with the, uh, the jumpering. See here it says cable select or C select, slave and master. So, on a standard IDE cable, I can't pull this one apart, but this would connect to your system bus. If you run the cable down, this is the first one, and this is the last run. Now, the way this works, um, this works on a nodal effect. So the frequencies that run down this cable work in a nodal fashion, meaning there's a frequency at which the node is zero. 
So you want to avoid that. If you'll notice, the cable is not symmetric. It's asymmetric. So if you were to wiggle this cable between the two ends, it would cross here. It would never cross here. It's very specific. And the reason it never crosses here is because you never want it to cross here. Because this information that passes back and forth, you don't want it to have here. You want it to cross here, otherwise it collides. It's called collision. So in this case, it's, this is a pretty low speed one. And um, so you determine where you connect based on the controller, which is here. If you select, cable select, this is the controller. If you select master or slave, the device is the controller, not the cable. Okay? Okay. So when you select cable select, this becomes the master, this is the slave. And that's your system board. If you select master slave, this is immaterial. The frequency